Hi boys and girls, today we're going to talk about a very famous Mexican artist. Her name is Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo is one of Mexico's most famous painters. She was influenced by lots of different Mexican art styles. One important Mexican style of art is called Mexican folk art. It's one of the oldest ones that we know. You can tell that it's Mexican folk art because everything is handcrafted and they use very bold and very bright colors and they use lots of shapes and lines and textures. One thing that I really want you to focus on for this project and we're going to be talking a lot about is called visual balance. Visual balance is a principle of art that organizes the elements of art in an artwork by creating the same weight to both sides. When we talk about the elements of art, remember, we're talking about line, color, texture, space, form, value, and shape. And when we talk about putting them in a balance, we want them to look as if they're the same and they have the similar items on both sides to create our balance. Which brings us into our next project. We're going to be creating a Mexican folk art, flower drawing, or painting. Our learning goal for this project is we're going to be producing a work of art through drawings that utilizes an awareness of space. Remember, when we talk about space, we're talking about the entire paper that we're using. And then when we create our visual balance, we're going to be creating something that's going to be all over our page, which is going to cover all of the space of our page. Our learning targets for this project are I can create artworks inspired by different time periods and cultures, and in this case we're talking about Mexican folk art, and I can explore and use the elements and principles while creating art. And those elements of art are those ones that we discussed in a couple slides ago. Because our project is a drawing, some of the materials are optional. You will need something to draw on, whether it's a piece of paper, the back of an envelope, a brown paper bag, or anything you can find to draw on. I recommend using a pencil so that if you make a mistake, you can erase it. And then if you'd like to add color to your picture, you're going to need markers, crayons, paint, pastels, or colored pencils. In just a moment, we're going to do a step-by-step -step together on how to draw our Mexican circle flowers. But if you would rather, you can find these directions under the Files tab under Teams, and you can print them out or you can take a look at them on your computer if you find that this is easier to follow along. All right, boys and girls, welcome back. We are about to do our circle flower drawing that is in the Mexican folk art style. All right, so we are going to follow along with the steps. There's nine steps to this project. And remember, we're going to be keeping in mind that we're, we're talking about time periods and different types of cultures. And remember, this one we're focusing on Mexican folk art, and we're going to start right now. So let's first get your paper, and you're gonna set it horizontal. Horizontal, remember that is side to side, and horizontal is also hot dog style. All right, so our step one for our Mexican circle flowers is we are going to make three circles that take up the space of our page. So we're gonna start over here and we're gonna make one circle. We're gonna put one here and we're gonna do two circles. Over here, we're gonna do three circles. And if they're not perfect circles, it's co totally fine. I'm not using anything right now to trace. If you'd like to trace something that is a circle shape, you can do that. If that helps you, you can use something like a lid of some sort to go ahead and trace your circles. But either way, it doesn't matter. They don't have to be perfect circles. All right, so that is step number one. Remember, we need three circles that are a little spaced out, taking up the whole page. All right, our step two, we're gonna start adding the center part of our flower. So we're gonna start here, and we're gonna go from here over to here, and we're going to be making a curved line. And it's a curve that goes up, and over here we're gonna do the same thing. On the third one, we're gonna do the same thing. And there's two parts to this step, so we're not only going to make the curved line going this way, we are also going to make a curved line going the other way, and it's kinda of going to look a little bit like you're adding a top eyelid and a bottom eyelid. That's the way it kind of looks to me. It kind of looks almost like you're making an eye, but we're not. It's even going to look more like an eye when we get to step three. So next we're on to step three and we're going to add two curved lines going this way. And bear with me, they are going to turn into a folk art style rose. So we need th curved lines going in a vertical motion. So we're going up and down with the curved lines now. And then that is done for step three. So step number four, we're going to add a slanted line or a diagonal line that has a little bit of a curve to it. 
on the side right here on each of our three circles. So it's gonna go there like that and again and again. And remember you can find all the directions for this video and you can find the printout directions online. All right, under teams and your files. Next we're going to make another curved line that goes up starting about here. So about halfway in our last curved line and over here, and that is step number five. So now we're on to step number six, and step number six we're going to add a little circle, a little half circle inside, right in the center. And if you wanna go ahead, you can add a little curl to it. I didn't add the curl like this inside the directions, but I thought it might make it look even neater on the inside of our row, so you can go ahead and add that. All right, so step number seven, we're gonna add some leaves and you can add them however you want on different parts of your rows. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add one big one here because remember, we're trying to take up the whole space of our page. And so we're not drawing little itty bitty pictures, we're drawing big ones. So we want big leaves that take up a lot of that extra space. And I'm gonna leave the one middle rows, this one alone, and I'm not going to add a, any leaves to it. I'm gonna add a little design at the end. All right, so next for step number eight, we're going to add the crease that goes inside of our leaves. And it's kind of like a wiggly line. Got a little curve to it, not really a wiggle, I guess. Be kind of more like a little bit of a curve. So now we have the crease inside our leaves. All right, and for the last step, for step number nine, I want you to go ahead and you can add any kind of design that you want to. Folk art style uses lots of designs, bold colors, dark black lines. So what, and they also use like lots of different types of patterns and textures inside. So I want you to go ahead and you're gonna add some other designs and I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna add some of these. You find these a lot on folk art, a lot of the curvy lines. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add some lines inside my leaf. And I'm using a Sharpie to draw. You don't have to use a Sharpie to draw. If you feel comfortable and you have a marker, you can use that. But I just prefer using a Sharpie. I think it's easier to see on the video. But if you wanna use that, you can. I prefer a pencil for you, just in case you make a mistake. Now, if you wanna go ahead, you can add other designs. You could add some things that you find on folk art are the dots. So you can find some of the dotted designs on a lot of folk art pictures. So go ahead and you can add other types of patterns or textures to your picture. And I'm just adding a few. And you could go in, you could add other designs, but you do however you would like to do. But this is the end conclusion to our Mexican circle flowers. Now, we are focusing on this being a drawing, so you do not have to add color, but if you would like to add color, you can use anything that you want. You could use crayons, pastels, paints, colored pencils, whatever you'd like to produce color on top of it. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you had fun.